Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. As we wait for Nvidia and AMD to release their new GPUs, there's basically nothing left to check out, but I've managed to come across on a little gem so to speak, at least to me. I say that because this is my first encounter with the colorful brand and the model in question is their iGame series GTX 1050 Ti. Being a Chinese brand, Colorful is actually pretty popular on the Asian market, which gives me extra reason to check it out in close and see what exactly does it offer, especially compared to those more popular brands like Asus, Gigabyte and MSI. Looking at it from the outside, the packaging doesn't look any different than your generic GTX 1050 Ti, and on the inside is the same bundle-wise, there's basically none, but in here we finally have a chance to take a first glance at the GPU. The design of the cooler is pretty nice looking in my opinion, the outer plastic shroud has this sort of gunmetal finish and it's mostly black with some hint of red in a few places, also with some branding surrounding it, so it's pretty much themed and not too aggressive or overly colorful. The backside supports this very sleek looking matte black plate with some subtle red accents, which gives this car that extra something, and this we can all appreciate since it's a lower performance tier GPU in question. Sandwiched between all of that we have a completely blacked out aluminium heatsink with two also black 90mm fans on top of it, and this completes the whole picture of the car design wise. Overall it feels really solid build quality wise and it can easily go neck and neck with other major brands. There's even one thing which sets it apart and you maybe even noticed it by looking at the b-rolls and that is this dedicated switch on the back right next to the video outputs which since we are already here we have three one dvid one display port and one hdmi going back to that switch it has two positions one represents and lowers the so to speak normal stock clock for the card that being 1291 megahertz for the gpu the other position loads out the turbo clock bumping the gpu speed to to 1380 MHz, while in both cases the speed of the 4GB GDDR5 video memory stays the same at 1752 MHz. This is a very handy feature for users who are in search for some extra performance but don't want or know how to overclock. The only thing you have to do after pressing it is to restart the PC in order to apply the new profile. Although we've seen something similar with other manufacturers, in fact most of the AMD's GPUs come with dual BIOS as a default option, but still you will rarely see it in this form and especially on lower tier GPUs like this GeForce GTX 1050 Ti series. For powering itself up, it uses one 6-pin PCI Express power connector and no, it cannot work without it, I've tried it. As for the rest of the configuration, this time I've paired this GPU with a for it a more suitable hardware environment, that being AMD's Ryzen 5 2400G APU, an MSI's B350M motor motherboard with 16GB of DDR4 3000MHz RAM on it. Checking out the car's overclocking potential, as you can see here by looking at MSI's afterburner, I've managed to get pretty impressive figures, especially for the memory, where I've maxed out its slider, bumping it overall to 2252 MHz. The GPU speed was set at plus 120 MHz, which resulted in a fully stable frequency anywhere from 1930 to 1950 MHz under load. That's definitely well over your average figures which I got to see while testing a bunch of other GeForce GTX 1050 Ti based cards, so I can say that this particular sample is a good overclocker. Let's go out and check out the benchmarking figures, you're here for that after all. This time I've updated my testing routine, I've removed older games and added newer ones, over 15 of them plus synthetic benchmarks, as well as adjusted the in-game graphical settings to medium, those less demanding even to high, so it can give you a better representation for this segment of graphics card, what it's capable of, and beside the usual average frame rate, I've also started using the 1% and 0.1% averages, with my usual side-by-side -side comparison for this particular card, its turbo stock profile and overclocking figures. 
Speaking of overclocking, as you saw at the beginning of the slides, the 3D Mark result difference between stock and overclocking profile is pretty huge, almost 1000 points in Firestrike and 300 in Time Spy. That difference also continues to spread onto the games, which get on average around 5-10% to performance gain with overclocking, in some cases even more. Overall, with everything set at medium graphics settings, you will be greeted by more than this in frame rate, especially in 1080p resolution where as you can see it's well above 60 fps in most of the games. 1% averages are also really good almost across the whole board, especially in better optimized games, while 0.1% averages can vary depending on what API are you using, and again how well the game is optimized, cause one short freeze or FPS drop kills those averages pretty fast, and I've experienced that mostly in DirectX 12 titles, while on the other hand for example Vulkan API was delivering next to perfect results. With all that said, let's take a look at the rest of the results without me talking over it. This kind of performance is followed by a very reasonable power draw. The whole system was pulling anywhere from 160 to 170 watts while playing games and trying to only isolate the pure consumption of the graphics card with a GPU only specific load. I can estimate that the difference between it being in idle and load is around 100 watts. Adding manual overclocking to that, it went up by 20 to 30 watts. 
With the power consumption being on the lower side, you can easily guess that the GPU temperature would be pretty tamed, especially with having dual fan setup paired with a decent sized heatsink. That said, as you can see it here, under load during gameplay, it was mostly around 55 degrees Celsius, with fan speed being at 40%, while with the Fermax stress test, it was basically the same, with just a tad higher fan speed and temperature, but still under 60 degrees Celsius. During idle the GPU temperature was usually hovering around 26 degrees Celsius, which is really down there, but it's not a surprise since this model doesn't have a 0 RPM, 0 dB mode, so the fans spin all the time, around 800 RPM or 30% of fan speed in idle. Although maybe not that important, that's the only real downside which I could point out, as it's nowadays a very common feature, but on the other hand, you'll get lower idle temperatures compared to those which are usually way above 30 degrees Celsius when the card is in so to speak passive mode. As a form of a compensation, the card in idle is really quiet, almost as if the fans are off. Under heavy load, it's also barely audible, even on an open testbed. I'll put some audio samples of the noise which I've recorded for you to hear, using few different fan speeds, as well as show the dB figures coming from a sound meter, which you can see in the shot. All in all, I was pleasantly surprised how well this car performs across all fields, which you've now also witnessed yourself, especially when I didn't know what to expect as this was my first interaction with this brand. The car is decent looking, overclocks very well and runs cool and quiet. Bottom line, a well-rounded product that can compete with more familiar options from the western markets, especially considering its price point. But there is a catch, Colorful is not that widely available on those same western markets, so you'll have to reach towards eastern ones in order to get one. My sample was sent from Gearbest.com, you've probably heard of them before since they have a bunch of different electronics hardware, and I want to thank them for providing me with one so I can review it and bring to you some of the brands that we don't have a chance to check out that often or at all. Hopefully I'll be able to do that in the near future too. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, don't forget to subscribe if you aren't, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!